Okay, there is almost no single argument in the whole text. It's a kind of curse, it's bad-mouthing, it's calling up names. What Wagner says, if you take the text, what he says, he says, look, we have been uh, politically correct so far with the Jews. Uh, we, we loathe them, we really loathe them, but it's not nice. The li when we were liberals, we, know, we knew it is not nice. So we refrain from expressing our feeling. That's wrong. It is very natural for, peace, for people to, 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 to let out their feeling. It is authentic to speak out your real... Uh, we lose the Jews, let's say so, it's okay. They are contaminating our music, they are contaminating our, um, our uh, culture, they have no roots, they can do nothing for us. Let's say so in the open, it's okay. What he's doing there, he's bad-mouthing, he's legitimizing the expression, the lowest kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, expression of bad feelings against someone. But he's not presenting a single argument. So it's like, it's like calling someone by a very long name, that's all, and legitimizing what you're doing. Which, if you look at the scene between Siegfried and Mime, when Siegfried, when Mime, when Siegfried doesn't know that Mime is scheming against him, all that Siegfried knows at that time is that Mime was caring for him. He's ugly and he, he loathes him, of course, he cannot stand him, but he knows that he has no reason no reason in the world to loathe Mimi. He just loathes him because he doesn't know that Mimi is scheming. He does, he's not yet in, into the picture. And he tells Mimi, I loathe you. I cannot stand you. And I, 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 I quote from memory and so on. This is exactly what Wagner says uh, in the Studentum in the Musik and what Siegfried says to Mimi at that, at that point. There is a parallel there. There are people who have said that all the things that he complains about, about the Jews, are in fact uh, his own qualities. The need for luxury, the need for money, the, uh, the need for recognition. I will add something else. This is, all this is, is, is gossip and partly true. I will add, add something else. The lack of roots, which he attributes to the Jews. Jew comes from the synagogue, he, he, he's not part of us, he's not, he cannot express, is also his. Because the whole German mythology that he brought out is a fabrication. It's a construction. It is something that he created, like so many others, created and fabricated elements for German nationalism of their time. Nationalism was, in a way, a construction, a fabrication, in a way. And he participated in the fabrication of, a, of the cultural background for German nationalism in fabricating, a, in fabricating the, the so-called tissue, historical tissue, of, of German culture. So he is... Uh, the, this lack of roots that he uh, attributes to the Jews is in a different register, in a different way, very much his own. We know that Hitler never once quotes Wagner's anti-Semitism, although he quotes Wagner's anti-Marxism. Yes. Uh, now, to what extent, uh, and, the, and we've agreed that those texts are rather weak, and that Hitler didn't quote them, uh, to what extent were his political ideas seminal in the development of Hitler's own policies? I don't know, but, uh, but uh, I, I cannot tell that. Uh, I think that uh, Hitler scholars should, should, should answer that. But my impression is that Hitler was uh, uh, megalomaniac enough to uh, identify his, uh, himself with the Redeemer, with the uh, secular Redeemer, Wagner, especially the late Wagner, the Parsifal Wagner, was dreaming about. And he thought that as, a, as the Redeemer, which Wagner uh, uh, was, was dreaming up, or rather uh, envisioning, he, uh, Wagner was a prophet, and he is the incarnation of his prophecy. And that made uh, this link. And also, this, this idea of uh, using art, and especially music, as a political instrument appealed very much to Hitler, so he amplified he amplified Wagner into what, into what uh, Bayreuth of his time represented. It is the idea of Parsifal, exactly the thing that repelled Nietzsche, attracted Hitler. And Hitler saw himself as this redeemer, and he saw music not just for what it is in a, in a, in a, in a cultural uh, aesthetic sense, but as an instrument of the new revol revolution which will redeem 
humanity through the German people, through the redeemer of the German people, which is Hitler. And all this you read or found or listened in into, into, uh, into the Meistersinger, Parsifal, and so on. And so much of that, in Wagner, so much of that redemption has to come through destruction. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But, uh, but you see, uh, I don't think that Hitler thought of himself as only a destroyer. He thought of himself also as, as, uh, as a, in, a very, in a very perverse way, as a redeemer, as bringing a new, a new uh, re redemption, a new ideal. And there is a certain, again, I don't want to sound so, uh, uh, so uh, non-Wagnerian, but there is a, a certain saccharine, saccharine naivete in Parsifal or in some of this, or in Siegfried, I mean, Siegfried, such, only the beauty, only the, the strength, the simplicity, no complication of reasoning, no complication of anything. I mean, this naivete, this fabricated naivete, which I call fabricated, this fabricated naivete, uh, has something infantile in it, which I think Im appealed uh, to a good deal of true and sincere romantic believers. Has enough been said about the debate on what on earth he meant by his closing paragraph uh, on the Vernichtung? There was, there's a lot of Talmudistic uh, rationalization about it. I think that uh, this, is, this is read with too, too much hins insight. And much as I criticize Wagner and much as I see all the dangerous and, the un, and the sometimes abject elements in him, I think that you shouldn't read him with insights. Uh, you should place him within, I'm a historian uh, of ideas, you, play, you should place him within his own time, his own place, his own context. It's bad enough, what he, it's bad, it's bad enough in, in certain important respects. It shouldn't be exaggerated. What is the anti-Semitic imagination? Where does it come from? Uh, Nietzsche was very good in saying it comes from ressentiment, which means that you cannot affirm yourself and be confident with yourself and happy with yourself unless you negate in a very petty way someone else. You have to negate someone else in a petty, ven vengeful way, some other in order to be able to say, I'm, all, I, I'm also someone, I am to, to gain some perverse kind of confidence. This, of course, is a human phenomenon much broader than anti-Semitism, but it is certainly one of the, psych one of the psycho, mass psychological uh, aspects of the anti-Semitic Im imagination. But the other is the need to secularize the, the hatred of the Jews uh, embedded in uh, in theology, in Christian theology. This is what you started from. When modern antisemitism, 19th century antisemitism, moved from the old theological ob objection to the Jews, or hatred of the Jews as these sides, to a political and racist. And that is much, much more dangerous. Only that could have produced uh, Auschwitz. Here I am positive. Only that kind of could have produced Auschwitz. Because when you say that the Jew is not faulty because of his or her religion, but because of his or her very existence, that there is that the fault of of Judaity, of being Jew, cannot be washed out, even if you convert, whatever you do, call it uh, call it racism or anything like this. I call it existential anti-Semitism, which it no longer depends upon religion. Then the Jew has no escape. Then the only way of wiping it out is to wipe out the very existence of the Jew, uh, which was done in Auschwitz. So this new anti-Semitism is much, much more dangerous. It was not the invention of the Germans. It was invented in Spain. It was invented in Spain uh, in the 15th and especially the 16th century. But nobody went as far. In Spain, they, they had this mythology of the pu purity of blood. So they persecuted, they persecuted uh, converted Jews, conversos. But they, converse, they, they persecuted them more or less as Hitler did in Nuremberg, and even less. They never went beyond that. The Germans, the, 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 the Germans under Hitler uh, did this, uh, this historical extra step.